The UK is undergoing a crisis at this time. With uncertainty over Brexit and massive disruptions in the government, there's no telling what tomorrow has in store. In the meantime, housing has slowed down, prices are getting slashed, and it has become more of a buyer's market. With cheap money in abundance and yet a continued slowdown in borrowing, the UK's crisis may escalate rather quickly. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's happening in the UK. I found some information information, wanted to give you a quick update, so let's get into it right away. You might have thought jumbo-sized home loans were a thing of the past, but this week saw the launch of a mortgage that lets people borrow up to six times their income. Now, if you live in certain places of the world, six times their income may not seem like a lot, but when you really break it down and understand what that means, of course, that is a lot. Now, essentially, this company has decided to give these type of loans to individuals such as accountants accountants and lawyers and doctors and so on. So these are generally people that are making a lot of income here and so they are supposedly more secure, safe and sound. So they give out those loans and it's a lot of money to be given out, that's for sure. They get into some more details here. It comes after a few months after Clydesdale Bank said it would grant mortgages of 5.5 times the income to some professional first-time buyers. So they're trying to get people to get into this market, borrow more money, because the more money they can loan out, the more profit they can make. That's what it comes down to. Eventually, you do have people that are unable to pay back, but you try to minimize those numbers and simply push out this money to as many people that will take it. Nowadays, lenders talk more about affordability tests than salary multiples. That said, the typical maximum income multiple available in the UK is about 4 to 4.5. The Darlington says that applicants must be qualified members of an industry body and the maximum loan is 90% of the property's value. Individuals do not have enough money to buy homes with cash. That's the general consensus. So we have to get a loan. Now what value, loan to value, are we really considering to be safe? That all depends on who you ask. However, a 10% down on a down payment for that mortgage, for that home, I don't think it's a enough personally, especially when we're talking about homes that are 700,000, a million dollars, 1.5 million. It generally seems that 10% is not nearly enough. You are holding on to a huge amount of debt. doesn't matter what you earn because generally what I see is that people push themselves to the maximum. So if they are a doctor, for example, and they suddenly they're making more money, and now what do they do? Well, they move into a bigger home. They get a nicer car. They start taking on more things that push their payments up to the maximum. So if they're earning, let's say, $20,000 a month, maybe they're spending $18,000 a month. So it doesn't really matter whether, you know, you are making 20000 or 2000 It really makes a big difference in who is left with the most at the end of the month. That's what concerns me right now because individuals, high net worth or not, are spending way too much money in general. So then we'll go back to show you that here. This is back from July of this year after the financial crisis struck in 2008. Loans to first-time buyers were immediately slashed. There would be no more jumbo-sized mortgages of five times income or more. There would be no more 95% or 100% loans. Buyers would need a large deposit. But this week, Clydesdale Bank said it would grant first-time buyers mortgages of 5.5 times a borrower's income and lend up to 600000 and the buyer only needs a 5% deposit. All right, so we get into this mode where you want to make more profit, you got to lend more money. And that's what they did. That's what they're doing. We've been told that the market is much safer today, that this wasn't happening, that's not happening, this isn't happening either. But I've heard that all before. I heard that in 2007, and I'm hearing it today. I'm not suggesting it's exactly like 2007. It's a completely different scenario than we had. But to suggest that everything is safe and sound, absolutely not. 
So they get into more details of that. Remember, this is from back in July. I just wanted to show you because they get into some of the details and why you think it's important. Now today, London homeowners are hoping to sell their property before Christmas. They're slashing prices, offering a rare opportunity for buyers in the run up to the festive season. House prices in London fell 1.7% this month alone. And that's a big drop for a monthly indicator when you see that. Generally, you get in the less than 1%. If there is a drop, you would see 0.2%, 0.4%, but 1.7 in a month truly is significant. It's the largest November drop since 2012. There's some other details in here, but of course, if you're interested, you can take a look. Now, I don't know how accurate these numbers are. I do remember not that long ago, we had in the UK, the mortgages for a variable, they were offering it at 0.99%. That is unbelievable. That's basically free. This is totally fine. Housing always goes up. We don't have anything to worry about and it's safe and sound. I personally don't believe that when in this case you're dealing them out at 0.99% for a mortgage. You have certain places that will offer you 100% of that mortgage. You can take out as much money as you need. There's other places that are going into schemes and scams today that they never even existed 10 years ago. So yes, we have have very big concerns. Average interest rate for mortgages in the UK from June 2014 to June 2018, you'll see here the general trend is actually down over the last few years. Why are they making it even easier for people to borrow other than wanting to push the market up? It's becoming very difficult to figure out what's going to happen because of Brexit and all the issues. But what you got to do is you got to make it easier for people to borrow, whether that is through real estate or whether that is simply all different types of bailouts, subsidies and tax breaks and anything you can do to push the markets up higher to keep the economy going. That's what these governments are doing. And of course, it's only going to compound if this whole Brexit issue doesn't get resolved. This is just um, talking about Steve Eisman, who you might know from the big short. He said that he has bets against two UK banks and suggests that he's got a screen of 50 UK stocks. He's ready to short them all. And whether or not he's correct, I don't know. He was correct last time around. It doesn't necessarily mean anything for this time, but it's just interesting to see what he is talking about here with the UK and how that connects in with Brexit and so on. All right, that's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. I want to say hello to everybody in the UK, all my friends there. Hello to you. I know that I'm always trying to get some information for you. Hope you appreciate it, of course. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have it all. I've covered everything in here, including real estate, including interest rates, mortgages, and so on. Check them out. Link is in the description. If you're more interested in the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.